Hello everyone, in this video we're going to walk through the Flux One Turbo LoRa model. We have Alimama, one of the subsidiary companies of Alibaba Group. A team in Alimama focuses on AI application developments and model training. They recently released the Flux Turbo Alpha. Flux One Turbo Alpha is based on the Flux One Dev model to train on. The purpose of this LoRa model is using Flux image generation with fast and low step sampling for image generations. It's currently able to take eight steps for distilled LoRa, which enables use on our existing Flux workflows. In Comfy UI, you can apply the Flux LoRa Turbo LoRa model by adding a LoRa loader after the Yonet loader. Now all you have to do is go to the files and versions and download this model, which is a 694 megabyte file size. Once you download this file, they should be located in your Comfy UI models LoRa subfolder. For better practice, I will use the model card names, which are Flux1 Turbo Alpha, to rename this model's files for better organization in your Comfy UI folders. So when we have this downloaded, for example, I have created a few workflows based on these LoRa models, and we will go through them together in these videos. First of all, as you can see, I have the UNet loader for GGUF quantization model of Flux and also the quantization models for the T5XXL, which is going to enable us to use both GGUF and the normal UNet files of Flux models to connect with the LoRa. This means that this Flux1 Turbo Alpha is compatible with the safe tensor checkpoint model for Flux, or if you have GGUF quantization format like this, or the original Flux model. UNet files are also able to load this LoRa model compatible with your workflow. All you need to do is add the load LoRa after the UNet and the clip loader custom nodes and pass all this data just like you usually do for Flux workflow. In this example, I'm using this Turbo Alpha LoRa and trying that using very low sampling steps. Here I have the detailers using eight steps where they claim these models are trained and enabled at this moment to use eight steps distilled LoRa. So I'm testing that using eight steps in my workflow right now. Now I am using this SAM loader, which is coming from the segment Anything Custom Nodes. I'm doing an in-paint-like feature for this workflow where I have to load an image. In this example, I have an AI-generated image of a young woman and try to segment the dress of this character. Once we have that object in the mask area, we have passed the mask to segment data using the Impact Pack Custom Nodes. And then again, this is the very good old impact pack detailers that I have always used before. Right now, it is able to work with Flux model. We are able to pass the segment area to the detailers, which allows it to repaint this specific area that I selected. In this example, I have changed the dress colors to a bright blue color that is affected by my text prompts here. And then passing that to the second sampling, which normally we are going to do, is use the upscale image by custom nodes, which tend to do well in stable diffusion. But when I test that to bring it to flux model, it's not working that well. So what I have done is just use a model upscale, just like I usually like to use the CR upscale image and then upscale to 1.5 scale size of the first pass from the segment detailer output image. And I have used another eight steps. So here we have to do some math. If you want to make more steps for the second sampling group to run, then you have to multiply by eight in here. What I have done is using the K sampler advanced, which did eight steps starting from step eight and ending in step 10, which I just allowed the sampling group to add just two more steps. But sometimes it's flexible. You don't have to use just one setting here. Sometimes I will tune that up to 14 or even just go to 16 on here. It depends on the situation and the generated image result that you want. For the second sampling group, I also add another LoRa here, which is the Flux Realism LoRa to make this output image look more realistic. And if you have other LoRa's, you can try with those as well, like the Skin Texture Styles LoRa, or if you like my examples right here, I have trained my own character LoRa as well. You can use that. It depends. Again, it depends on your output image. There's no one answer to fit all questions. Some people have commented before that they look for absolutely one answer only to work with some workflows, and that is a fairy tales. Fairy dust. It doesn't exist. Anyway, moving on to another sampling group, which is another K sampler. I finished the 16 steps here, starting at 10 steps from the last group, and finishing another 16 steps totally in this group. The output is going to look a little different from what I have in the first in-painting detailer style scoop. The face is a little different, and of course the outpaint area, the pants or the skirt here, 
are going to be what I modify using the text prompts. Lastly, it will pass to the upscalers for which I'm using the Flux Control Network Union Pro. Again, this is a very convenient control net model that allows us to have just one file and run mostly to support what I need most of the control net that I needed to do my work here. So using the tile control net and passing that to the ultimate SD upscalers, we are going to upscale it by two sizes. Then that will be the output and save that into our output image folder where I have predefined the names of the folder's name and the file's name as well as the naming conventions of the files for this image. The other format that I do is text to image and also image to image as well. It is using the similar format using this Flux1 Turbo Alpha LoRa and based on this LoRa running X steps per sampling group and for each sampler I'm setting using 8 steps only. Of course you can set it higher but that is the beauty of Turbo LoRa that enables you to load in the low step to create an image like this and also the naming conventions for text to image and image to image. I have found that as well using the folder by Flux1 Turbo Alpha and using the represented features of the name for the folder here just to make it easier to organize. We will try one time using the InPaint Alight features. Although the Ali Mama Hugging Face page has a dedicated control net for InPaint, which you can download as well, I realize that I don't need this InPaint control net model to do what I need to do in my comfy UI right now. If I need to use this control net, it would waste another 4 GB of space in my storage. Just using a mask to segment and bypass to a detailer or already doing what I need to do in like an InPaint feature here. So without that, I'm also able to create something like that using just Turbo Alpha LoRa and using a normal Flux model to create such in-painting features. Let's try another image in the in-painting workflow first. Let's use this example as I always did. For example, like this one, I want to change the color of the hair. So what I need, the first thing is, of course, in the segment, anything very easy. We use hair as the prompt to allocate the hair positions for the mask area. Secondly, what I need to do is, of course, do the text prompt and I'm going to turn other groups disabled before that. First, just run the inpaint group here to have a preview of what I like to move on to the detailer and upscaler in further of this workflow. So the first thing is going to do the text prompt. Here I have a text prompt for changing the hairstyles and hair color for this image. Let's click run and see how that goes. So here we have the segment, any defined hair mast area or the mast region, and pass that to the segment for the inpaint pack detailer notes. Once we have that, we have to go through some sampling again in eight steps. Here is the result. It looks a little bit like what I expected, but except I want a little bit more silver. Let's try to set the settings on here and try that. Okay, that is a little better than what I expected to do for just highlighting the areas for silver hair. Next, we are going to do the sampling and go through the upscalers, etc. Here, the second part, we are going to enable all the groups and go to the second groups. We are going to see if we need to change anything before you run your image generations. It looks like it is all set and we are ready to go with the second sampling. Okay, so we got the result here and I have just been running through the sampling and at the 16 steps, there are extra 16 steps here for sampling two and sampling three groups. I haven't run the upscaler at this moment because just for demos, I don't want to spend too much time on this right now. By seeing the result here, as you can see, I have added the realism, Laura. Therefore, in between these injections for the image from the detailers, inject that to the second groups before sampling, I have injected the realism, Laura. So therefore the output of the image will look not the same as what I have from the loaded image and also the in-painted image. It will be adding the realism. Laura and the face are going to look a little different and that's what I want for this image effect, for this new generated image. By adding just eight steps on the second sampling group, it will change a little bit for the face and also the hair, of course, a little bit gray hair on the top as well. Then the third group here in which I complete the other rest of the steps in the case sampler. Again, if you want to just use more sampling steps, you can do that. But for the Turbo LoRa model, it is unnecessary to do too many sampling steps to generate images. So 
Here I got the third sampling step. Again, not too many artifact skins. It will add some, you know, look like some normal human skin rather than so plastic artifact styles from Flux and degenerate times for this second and third sampling groups, which are using just five seconds. And another third group here adding another six steps, which is 15 seconds only. So that is pretty fast for using a Flux image. When we scroll up here, as you can see, my first in-painted groups used 11 seconds to generate that image. That is pretty fast performance for Flux. As you guys have experienced in Flux, we have done like one minute to generate a good quality image. Or even some people with a lower configuration GPU or display card will experience more than one minute to generate an image in Flux before. Right now, using the Flux One Turbo Alpha LoRa, we are able to use very low steps, just like previously we have in Stable Diffusion's LCM and SDXL Turbo and Lightning. The kind of low step image generation model allow us to run for Flux right now. That is a pretty good way, although sometimes it's not going to have a good quality for such LoRa models to generate images, but we can use multiple sampling groups like this example here by just adding more steps and using this K Sampler Advance, I can control how many steps I added into the new noise injections for these sampling groups. Then we are able to control how many steps we need before we have a satisfactory image output for what we want. The second example is the text to image, which is very, you know, again, very easy basic stuff from Flux, where we are using the text prompts as the creative central for the image and pass that to all the sampling groups doing their latent encoding and the noise decoding, etc. So here again, I have used the GGUF Flux model and clip loaders, and then now it's going to the Turbo Alpha LoRa, pass those data to model and clip data to the clip text encode. And then we are using the text prompts, just usually what we do to generate an image. So let's try this one. Again, this is another example of image text to image that I am doing right now. As you can see, the testing steps can create an image that is pretty awesome. The skins and everything on the face of the character look pretty detailed, as do the eight steps of sampling in this generation image. And then the second step of this, the second sampling group, which will have some artifacts not finished yet because I have 16 steps and is only running 10 steps here and passing the other S. You know, just for quick generation in these third sampling groups, we have restored some phase of this elf fantasy style image. And look at the face with some spark fires going on the right side here. It looks very detailed as well. Looks pretty good in this image. I have generated a previous image before with the same text prompt. And this is the upscaled image. As you can see, it's also the same settings. Eight sampling steps and the second and third detailer groups, which I'm using in total, are 16 and 16 sampling steps and able to generate such details of image. And that is pretty nice using the Turbo Alpha LoRa model to generate this. During these sampling groups, I have not fast forwarded the timing of these recording videos and we will check how many times we need to generate such a result. So here I have the image generated already in the first group. As you can see, it's not a realistic style image. It's just a fantasy style image of a ballet dancer under the water dancing and trying to do such things. And see, there's something not really details if we are using eight steps of sampling and the faces are blurry, and hopefully there will be something we can fix later on. And then this is the second sampling group. In the meantime, I'm talking about this being generated already. Now we have restructured image and are also doing upscale for the second sampling groups and then the third groups for which we completed the 16 steps. Again, this number of steps, you can configure it by yourself, whichever numbers you like. If you want to take more sampling steps, you can do that as well in here. So after the third sampling detailer groups here, just very simple K sampler and VAE decode. And then we got our result here. So the phases are restored and then that is just using 18 sampling steps, which doesn't require too many steps to run. Again, on each sampling group, I am using just a step at a time for the first sampling and then two steps here and the other six steps in the third sampling group. Well, of course, you can add a little bit more if you want to generate a higher detail quality image, but I think this is already really cool things to play around with using 8-step to generate such an image. Again, this image is just using 11 seconds for the first image, and then the other rest are using just 10 seconds, 5 seconds, etc.
So again, I will post all of this in the Patreon group so you guys can check it out. And again, this is another image to image workflow, the same structure that I built based on the text to image, but I change, of course, the load image for the image to image features in this workflow and all this logic in here, the model loader and then the sampling groups. And as you can see, I did the previous image for like a landscape view in 3D style and then added some details in here. After that, we used an upscaler to do everything enhanced for the image. Even using these 16 steps is pretty nice for such a result already. Let's try, for example, I got this result, this image that generates using image to image. So again, the same load image examples that I did in the in-painting workflow. And then this time I am changing also the background as well and setting a little bit higher for the denoise as I want to change the background and the face a little bit more this time. And what I will do is enable the second and third sampling groups just for running this detailers group here. So the upscalers are also able to run, but it takes a lot more memories to load in the meantime. So I will try to finish the upscalers again at a separate time of recording these videos. So it loads the first group again with the same image result. It took 11 seconds to generate the first sampling group image, and then we are waiting for the second sampling group. But of course, if you are just counting on the K sampler here, of course it will be loading that few seconds only. But we have to also be considerate of the upscalers of the image. When I'm using this to upsize the image as well, and some data passing through between each sampling group, there's also spending some time. So for the command prompt timer here that we see, it is only the metrics for the image that it takes in the sampling custom notes to generate the amount of times in here only. And here's the result. As you can see, it took 10 seconds for the second sampling group. And then the third group, we took 30 seconds for this image here. So the second sampling group, of course, still has some artifacts of the skins and etc. And then the third one, although it looks a little bit older, but at least some more details on the face. And then we have more detail on the eyes. But so far, Flux 1 Turbo Alpha LoRa models can be generated within the short times using a step that is already what I appreciate for the developers in Alamama to make such models. As you can see in this hugging face page that they showed, it's also able to do in-painting features or the input and mask features in their examples here as well. So using a step, doing sampling, doing the in-painting set groups here, that is pretty cool. Just like what we usually have in Stable Diffusion's LCM and SDXL Turbo, some concepts are similar to that. So yeah, check it out. This is the Flux 1 Turbo Alpha Lora model. That is it for this video, and I will see you on the next one. Have a nice day. See ya.